LAFCO Municipal Service Review Study, a uh, presentation from LAFCO Executive Officer Team Simons to discuss upcoming municipal service review study of San Rafael Lucas Valley area. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Pete. Well, you. thank you so much, uh, uh, President uh, uh, Kai and, and board members, staff, and uh, members of the audience. Uh, Keen Simons, uh, now the two-year-plus executive officer for Murray County's local agency formation commission. And I'm very pleased uh, to bring with me our relatively new analyst, uh, Rachel Jones, who all of you are going to get to know a little better uh, in, in the next few months, and I'm going to talk a, a little bit about that. Um, but uh, LAFCO, uh, just a, a quick little uh, uh, bit of context. Uh, there's one of us in every county in California, and we are the uh, state's uh, regional service planning arm. And what we do is we uh, both regulate um, the physical establishment of cities and special districts like Marinwood uh, CSD. Uh, that involves any time there's a formation request, uh, an expansion, or something of that nature where a physical boundary line is being proposed to be moved. And then there's this regular uh, planning feature that LAFCOs take up, and one of the reasons I think we're here uh, this evening. And, and in short, um, it's this requirement that came uh, about, oh, I would say about 10 years, or no, more than that, about 15 years ago now, that LAF goes across the state every five years or so start preparing studies. We call them municipal service reviews. And at the heart, these are documents that are supposed to be these third-party kind of independent check-ins on um, the adequacy, the availability, and performance of local governmental services, all as it relates to current and future community needs. And so with that as kind of some context, you may recall, and I know Justin was here uh, um, about two years ago when I first came uh, to Mern Lafco, I, I introduced myself at one of these meetings and I said, uh, our commission, which includes a number of uh, appointed elected officials, is starting to develop a study schedule to kind of telegraph our resources going forward with respect to this mandate, again, this mandate to prepare these service reviews. And at the time, I uh, noted that we had this draft study schedule uh, in place and kind of identified uh, coming back and looking at San Rafael and the, the Lucas Valley, Marinewood area uh, sometime in the near future. Well, um, time has passed. It's now two years later. In fact, we did adopt that study schedule, and we have on the books for this fiscal year, uh, a study of uh, what we call the kind of the, the, the North Central 101 area, and that includes uh, the great uh, special district of Marinwood, as well as uh, your neighbors uh, uh, to the, uh, let's see here, the west and south of you, uh, CSA 13, uh, with Mr. Marinoff and crew, and of course, uh, City of San Rafael. And at its heart, again, this is a study that has no pre uh, presumptions, it is a, um, an independent assessment of what are the services that are being provided by all of the governmental agencies. And I think in total, and I'll look to Rachel, I think we're going to be looking at at least six governmental agencies, uh, half of them being dependent, half of them being independent. And ultimately, we need to come up with a set of determinations uh, that are prescribed under government code. And I'd certainly be happy to get into uh, the details of that. But what I wanted to make sure that this board was aware of as we uh, start uh, uh, putting pen to paper relatively soon, and I'll come back to that comment in a second, is that there are a handful of specific outcomes that this study uh, will ultimately, um, or at least potentially, lead to. Uh, for one, and this is by way of uh, the state uh, state law, we are going to be doing uh, what we call sphere of influence updates uh, for all of the affected agencies. So, for example, when we look at the Marinwood Community Service District sphere of influence, which is a boundary line that LAFCOs and LAFCOs alone draw and then update every so often and is the gatekeeper uh, to any future boundary changes or outside services. Um, we're going to look at your sphere of influence and we're going to consider, are there any reasonable changes that we think uh, should be in play to accommodate potential changes over the next five to ten years? And then in addition to that comment, we're going to look at maybe even some specific boundary changes, whether they be areas we think you should be considering annexing, 
or areas that maybe for different reasons you should think about uh, detaching. And then also, at the end of the process, um, and again, this is perhaps the most, um, not debated, that's not the right word, but the most uh, uh, potentially long-term significant impact of a municipal service review is that the state requires that we uh, uh, weigh into the issue of governance and alternative governance uh, um, opportunities. And that can come in the form of LAFCA weighing in on whether uh, there is an opportunity for reorganizations or if there are certain services that we think should be provided in a particular area, uh, in an area that, are, that aren't being provided uh, currently. And so a good example uh, for this uh, district is um, latent powers. Okay, so all special districts have latent powers. And these are the uh, items that under your enabling legislation, and so you're, you, you uh, uh, operate under community services district law, and under that section of law there's about 20 or so specific service powers that you could theoretically provide, okay? And they run the gamut uh, from everything that you already do, uh, fire protection, uh, to things such as mosquito abatement, uh, police protection, uh, and uh, possibly even funding uh, advisory or uh, um, other types of councils, uh, such as an area planning uh, commission, okay? Now, these are things that I know that in, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe warrant additional review as we go forward. Uh, and certainly, one of the things I want to get on this board's uh, uh, radar is uh, this upcoming Thursday, uh, Rachel is going to our commission at 7 o'clock uh, at San Rafael City Hall and is going to be seeking formal approval of a scope of analysis that uh, we've drafted and been working on for the last uh, month or so. And if we get the green light, um, Rachel's going to hit the, run, uh, hit the ground run, uh, running and start working on this report, the Municipal Service Review. And it would be safe to say that probably within the next few months, working with your staff, uh, we'll generate an agency profile, and we'll start tackling issues like our own population and, and growth projections <coughs> for the community, our own take on infrastructure needs or deficiencies, and again, those, uh, those areas that I already uh, mentioned, if there are any areas of governance alternatives that we think make sense, and they don't necessarily have to be formal consolidations or reorganizations, they could be even functional activities like joint power authorities. Um, but we also will tackle the topic of maybe uh, latent powers as well. This is an opportunity for this board and certainly your community uh, to start providing us some active uh, feedback as we go through what I would suggest is probably a six to nine month uh, process that if we play our cards right, hopefully we'll have a complete draft report out, uh, what do we uh, say, by uh, November. By November. Uh, and one of the things we'd like to do is, if, uh, especially if this uh, board is willing, to maybe even make use of one of your rooms and have uh, myself and Rachel kind of do a community workshop to explain the report and in particular some of the recommendations and findings that we would have. Now that all said, uh, nothing is going to be produced uh, that your general manager won't see beforehand, so at least there will be an opportunity uh, for us to get some internal feedback uh, whether it's uh, disagreements about some data that we've collected and we've interpreted or uh, to help us better understand, you know, we may be missing perhaps, you know, a key local condition that influences why you do uh, uh, service provision a certain way or why you don't do service provision a certain way. So that, the dialogue that we're going to have with your staff is certainly uh, going to be key. Uh, and it will be through your staff. Um, you know, for the most part, we'll be happy to come in and provide formal presentations to the board. Uh, but until we get a draft document, we'll be really relying on, on staff, not only Marinwood, but San Rafael uh, in the county who represents uh, CSA uh, 13. So um, with that, I'm going to uh, pause here. Certainly be happy to, to go into any more detail as, as you see uh, fit. But my, my goal, hopefully, was just to remind you that uh, we're going to be doing the study, that it has certain outcomes tied to it, but the outcomes 
um, are, are based on addressing state factors. And there's no predetermination uh, on, on our end about whether uh, reorganization is appropriate, whether a sphere of influence amendment is appropriate, whether the relationship between CSA 13 and Marin, which it's in the same. In many ways, the way I at least kind of view LAFCA law, this is really first and foremost about making sense of the baseline uh, and perhaps even justifying the baseline. It's very possible we can come away here and we say, you know, relative to everything we understand to be uh, true, these are the best setups that uh, we see right now. Or we may say, you know what, uh, we see a couple of issues. Uh, we'd like you to consider uh, them board, and when we come back in five years, we want to talk about it. Or, it's always possible we may be more proactive than that and say, we found some issues, we think you should uh, uh, give us some feedback, and we'd like to have at least some kind of uh, immediate follow-up uh, uh, with the affected community and with the boards. So I'm going to pause here and defer to uh, uh, the board for any questions or whatever I can do to help. Great. Thank you very much, Keen. Before, before we open it to public comment or questions, I do want to see, are there any questions from the board for for Keen or for LAFCO that any of us have? It seems pretty straightforward to what's going to happen, as long as we get to watch. <laughs> or interact. <laughs> um, yeah, um, thank you for the presentation. Um, certainly as we get on the road, there'll be more questions. But um, you've at least given us an idea of what's number one, what the timeline is going to be, and um, over time we'll figure out how to get involved. Great. But thank you. Okay. Um, in your presentation to the uh, City of San Rafael, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned three areas uh, that you will be examining. Um, one of them was public safety, but um, also public works and community development. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously, public safety is one of our um, areas of uh, uh, service provision, but I don't really see how the uh, parks and recreation uh, fit into the picture. Does that mean that your analysis will be focused on just part of uh, our services? Uh, not at all. So, um, and again, with the premise that it's a regional study that I think uh, you know takes in 30 some odd square miles, or maybe that's too big. Um, but again, you have the city of San Rafael, you have a handful of dependent CSAs, apart from number 13, uh, that serve uh, places like Los Ranchitos, um, uh, yes, uh, San Rafael Sanitation in the country club area, San Venetia. What, what, what Rachel ultimately came up with, and I think it's a, it's a good um, kind of strategy is um, create these three broad categories, as you mentioned, community development, public works, uh, and public safety that to some degree all of these agency services touch upon. And so public works in our uh, kind of orientation includes parks and recreation services. Oh, so it's not necessarily what... what these are kind of broader categories that were, yeah. Okay. Um, in many ways, this is somewhat trying to, you know, take a rather broad directive and try to fit into local conditions. So it's not the perfect fit, um, but I think uh, for our purposes, uh, we'll get there. It just may be under a category. It, it, it might be a very tricky comparison if you compare, like, apples to oranges in a way. If sure. You know what I mean? Sure. I had uh, two questions for you. One in regards to <clears throat> in regards to if, if we as a district wanted to wanted to activate any latent powers, when would you when would it be best for you to have that type of direction from from us as a district? So uh, certainly the district could signal you know as early as tonight there is interest in X, Y, and Z. However, under state law. Um, even if you were 100% committed to, for example, activating police protection as one of your latent powers, LAFCA would say, thank you so much for the application, but however, until we get done with a municipal service review, uh, we can't act on it. So um, I would suggest 
while providing us, you know, in advance signaling of your interest and what you hope to get out of the study, because all agencies can utilize the study for their own benefit of, of tackling a topic that may be per, uh, pertinent to uh, local needs. Um, we're looking at probably, again, if November is the, the goal of kind of getting this to our commission, probably waiting until then. Um, part of the latent power uh, discussion, of course, uh, and this is specific to the enabling legislation, um, has to be paired with a definitive um, service plan in terms of finances. And that's unlike annexations. For example, if you were so desirable uh, uh, or desired to annex all of Silvera and all of uh, the, the church property up there, LAFCA would have to consider a number of factors, but under state law, it doesn't require that we make specific financial uh, findings. Um, for good or for bad, anytime you do a latent, a latent power activation, we actually have to do a little more uh, uh, work on the financial uh, aspect and make a specific finding. So a little more work goes into it. Okay, so but it, so it's something that would be most appropriate after after. Yeah, in terms of an application, it would yeah. need to wait till the MSR. But in terms of at least signaling, hey, we're interested in this, or we're you know curious about that. Um, I would suggest the sooner the district, you know, provides us, uh, you know, some formal communication to that, we then can justify on our end expending some resources to look at a particular topic. So, before before the board would, would do anything, there would obviously be, uh, I, I would imagine, extensive discussion regarding anything in that amount, but just wanting to understand the, the timeline in that regard. And, <clears throat> Um, and beyond that, in terms of activating latent power, is 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 there a rough a rough ballpark figure that that generally comes out to, or is it just dependent upon what essentially is needed to be done? So, somewhat of a, a, an answer to both. So, our fee schedule uh, contemplates processing latent power requests on a deposit basis, based on you know the executive officer's kind of best guess of the number of staff hours it would take. Uh, to perform that, um, I think uh, you know the, a reasonable guess of any latent power is at least you know 30 hours to upwards to 100 hours, depending on how complex, uh, and also if there is a, an additional uh, environmental factor that uh, consideration that goes into it. Uh, we're still a very good rate relative to uh, governmental agencies. Our hourly, hourly rate is only 126 dollars. That may change, though, uh, by December, so keep that in mind. But that's how we would base the deposit. We'd okay. say, okay, we think it's going to take, you know, 40 hours, 40 times 126, and then we'd work against that deposit. Okay. Thank you, Keith. Very good. The wage goes up January 1st, so. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions from the board? Mm -hmm. Then I'll go ahead and open it up to comments or questions from the public. John? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, are there any members on your board who are members of the San Rafael City Council? Uh, there is. Uh, so, and I thank you, and I apologize for not uh, outlining who our membership is as of today. So, of our three City Council uh, members, we have Gary Phillips, Mayor of San Rafael, uh, Carla Condon, uh, Mayor of Corte Madera, and then Herb Weiner, uh, uh, Mayor of Sausalito. Our three supervisors, uh, Damon Connolly from this district, uh, Kate Sears, and then Judy Arnold. And then our three special district members include uh, Craig Murray from nearby Las Colinas, uh, Jack Baker from North Marin Water, and then uh, uh, Lou uh, Caius uh, from, um, thank you, Rachel, um, <laughs> from, um, Come on, no, you're supposed to I know, and the camera's right there. Uh, uh, I believe uh, 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 Alto, Alto, uh, uh, district. And then those nine get together and they appoint uh, two members of the general public, uh, one being our longtime chairman, Jeffrey Blanchfield, and then uh, uh, Christopher Burke out of Inverness. Did that answer your question, Ron? Uh, yes, I just wanted to a brief comment. Uh, lately, the uh, relationship between uh, Marinwood Lucas Valley and the city of San Rafael has improved. 
with the new mayor, a new business manager, a new fire chief, and a new uh, police chief, because in years past, Sam Rafael uh, espoused the policy of manifest destiny. I don't know if you remember that from U.S. history. We had to go from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. They vowed San Rafael should go all the way to the southern borders of Novato. And they had a very uh, aggressive program trying to get us to annex to them. And as I say, luckily, uh, the philosophy has changed now to one uh, more cooperation. So if uh, the idea of manifest destiny raises its ugly head in one of your meetings, I wish you would please have them disavow that publicly. <laughs> I will file that away. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. Stephen. Uh, actually, I have a couple questions. Uh, first of all, in your presentation, uh, I, I, I just want to understand your role. You talk about looking at things and changing things around. What I'm not hearing is any vote of the people or any vote of the board. Is that the way it works? You basically say, we've looked at this. This is our recommendation. This is what we're going to do. Or is there some uh, involvement by the public? So, yes and yes. When it comes to determining the sphere of influence, which again is the state's version of an urban growth boundary line for a city or a special district, uh, the vote and the power to make that designation lies solely uh, with the commission. So there would be no vote uh, of uh, other districts, other cities, or registered voters. Okay. Now, when it comes to actual boundary changes, whether that be in the means of a fundamental reorganization like taking, and this is just an example of it, but taking CSA 13 and consolidating it with uh, Marine with CSD, that would be dependent on uh, a vote of the people. Um, and there's, a, you know, LAFCO has kind of a, um, a layered approach to protest proceedings that takes into account both landowner uh, and registered voters, assuming there's a distinction. Uh, but yes, so ultimately, uh, voters would decide. Um, and the same with um, if there was any just annexation. You know, uh, I made that example, good or bad, of if Marin would want to annex the Silvera land. Um, if the property owners are in full agreement, well, then there's no vote of the people. If all 100% of the property owners are on board with the annexation. However, if one property owner has not, you know, signed a consent form, there is this process, a uh, protest proceeding, where you give everyone an opportunity to come in, and if uh, there's a sufficient um, numbers to say the majority are okay with it, we don't hold an election, we just go ahead and approve it. Or if enough people uh, um, protest it, well, then we go through a process of actually holding a mail ballot election. Okay, uh, so a, a couple other things, and this is to Ron's earlier points about uh, San Rafael. Uh, San Rafael has terrible debt. They also look at Lucas Valley as a place to, say, put the Ritter Center or other projects <laughs> that they have. And so um, I guess I'm, I'm trying to think how this works out. I mean, you know, we're not in great shape, but we're, we don't want to marry a bankrupt. And, and uh, how do those sorts of things get sorted out? Well, so again, going back to if a, if a fundamental boundary change or reorganization is proposed, um, there are layers of, A, thresholds for LAFCA to make the determination that it makes sense for a marriage uh, to occur. And then if LAFCO goes through the process of deciding, yes, this marriage has merit, again, unless every single landowner and or registered voter were to have signed a consent form, there would be this opportunity for protest. And at that, on that, at, at that point, it's basically the majority decides. If the majority don't want that marriage to happen, it doesn't go any further. If a majority are agreeable, well, then that marriage uh, occurs. And perhaps just for the benefit of, of, of an example, so before me and Rachel came to Marin Lafco, again, I came here two and a half years ago, Rachel, uh, just six months ago, 
uh, our predecessors were working on a study in Southern Marin that ultimately concluded, geez, there's these four independent uh, sewer uh, districts. Sanitary districts. Sanitary districts, thank you. And through the prism of LAFCO, and again, the, the planning laws that we administer on behalf of the state, it certainly made sense to the commission and staff that a marriage occurred, that these four districts turn into one. And we thought uh, it was a great idea, and the commission ultimately approved it. Um, but going to this comment, uh, there was enough people to uh, protest to trigger an election, and that election occurred in all four of the jurisdictional boundaries, and we needed passage in all four. So even if three of the four said yes, if one of those four uh, jurisdictional uh, uh, boundaries or, or service areas said no, uh, it wouldn't happen. And in that case, all four came back to varying degrees saying thanks, but no thanks left, but we like our, our four independent sewer collection agencies that uh, simply uh, rely on SASM for treatment. And that will be actually a topic we'll come back to in a few years as well. Keen, I attended one of your recent meetings, and you said a stat that it stuck with me, and I don't remember the numbers, I wonder if you could just repeat it, but there are X number of uh, government agencies in Marin County, and that ranked uh, a certain number amongst the nine Bay Area counties. Yes, yeah, so uh, uh, there are currently 11 cities and 54 special districts in Marin County. And those 54 special districts are divided between 30 independent districts, and this is an independent special district, and then the CSAs, and then the dependent. So those 64 uh, uh, governmental agencies subject to LAFCO uh, rank only second to uh, Contra Costa in terms of the amount of local government. Contra Costa has uh, 67. And I'll take that point, you know, the, you know, kind of extract that point even further. Uh, Marin really likes its local government. And so there's one unit of local government for every, I think, uh, 4,200 residents in Marin. And I count that by special district and city. In Los Angeles County, uh, there is one unit of the same type of government for every 850,000 uh, uh, citizens. So, while uh, you know, there's a perception that perhaps Southern California uh, is a little more bureaucratic and it has uh, you know, more layers of government, in truth, uh, Marin has a little more. And so that's one of the things that we look at. And again, not to presuppose that there are marriages that we need to make, but it suggests that at least it's something that we should have on our radar as we go through these uh, uh, planning processes. Can I just ask one other question concerning the voting? Uh, is it, are these ordinary elections, three months, or is it like a, a, a vote, you have to vote within 30 days or collect signatures within 30 days to protest the, uh, the marriage, if you will? So, so uh, the protest proceeding itself is generally needs to occur within 60 days of the LAFCO action. And then within that, and it can't occur before 21 days. So there's this 21 to 60 day window that we have to allow for protests. And if that protest is successful, and again, if there's, a, there's a calculation to it, uh, then we call the elections department uh, and we say we need to uh, 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 hold an election for X, Y, or Z. And I believe, and I'm not you know, sure about this, but I believe they're committed to doing it within uh, three months. Um, or if there is, I think there's some qualification, if a general June or November election is within a certain time period, they can place it on that. But most LAFCO matters go on mail ballots uh, elections just because of, of the scope. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the public? Yeah, I have one other one. Uh, there's something of election. If there's a protest, does it have to come from the annexe or the can the annexor, a resident of the annexing entity, file a protest? Or can a protest only be made from the entity that they want to annex? So and that's, that's an interesting question. So you're reversing the, 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 the field of, of normal orientation. If Marinwood wanted to uh, uh, annex, Marinwood District wanted to let me say this differently. If Silvera wanted to annex to you, 
Um, is there an ability for property owners and residents within Marinewood CSD to say no to that? Um, no, not under just an annexation. You know, if there was some type of fundamental reorganization where we're going back to the CSA 13 Marinwood, if that marriage were to be proposed, yes, both residents and, uh, and landowners of both governmental agencies' boundaries would get to protest. Um, but the idea uh, under state law for an annexation is, um, generally speaking, the district or the service entity, whether it be the city or the, the special district, could protest and say, you know, hey, it's great, Lafka, you received this request from Property Owner X to annex us, but we want not, you know, we can't do it, we're not interested. You could protest and essentially stop the proceedings. But an individual landowner within or resident within your jurisdictional boundary under state law doesn't have the ability to stop it. They could go to you and petition you to you know, stop it. Does the, the territory has to be, do you have to declare a sphere of influence for an area before it can be annexed or consolidated? Yes. yes, so again, the sphere of influence is the boundary keeper. So uh, in order for any land to ever be proposed for annexation or even an outside service agreement, um, it needs to be within the sphere uh, with some very arcane exceptions that I don't see ever really applying uh, for this district. So again, you know, uh, we're going to go uh, this Thursday to our commission with this draft scope of analysis. Uh, I assume the commission will approve something, whether it's exactly what Rachel prepared or maybe some modifications therein. And then that's going to start this uh, clock on our end where we're going to send out uh, some information requests uh, to Eric and to his counterparts with the city and with the CSAs. And I think ideally we would develop a kind of a draft profile of the agency um, within the next uh, uh, few months and, and really work with Eric in, in kind of organizing how he would like us to go about um, you know, presenting uh, uh, you know, specific sections, whether it be uh, on fire, uh, parks, uh, or other topics. So again, you'll see more of us. And uh, again, thank you for uh, the opportunity uh, this evening. Uh, I guess before we close, Chris? Yeah, I just wanted to briefly say, my name is Chris Calloway. I'm here, uh, aid for Supervisor Connolly. Um, just wanted to say that, obviously, Damon's engaged in this process, just like the rest of you guys. Uh, we met with uh, Keen and Rachel, along with the rest of the county agencies when they came to the county. Um, if you guys have any questions for Damon or want to speak with him, um, I'm uh, the person assigned, the staff member, the aid assigned to this one. So uh, feel free to reach out to me. My contact info is on the website. If you don't already have it, most of you probably do. Um, but yeah, we'll be sitting along uh, with you guys and, and participating in this, prog uh, in this process as a partner. So. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. Great. And unless there's anything else from you, Keith, then uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Greatly appreciate Thanks it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.